you know what month it is, guys? I mean, I barely do because my life is just a blur of drinking coffee and working and getting blackout drunk in my local Taco Bell. The last one's more recreational, but anyway, it's October, guys, one of my favorite months. And this month, I'm gonna try and make all the videos spooky in nature. It's gonna be a loose theme, though, but, uh, you know, it'll be there, don't you worry. I totally plan these videos out in advance. I don't, please help me. Today, we're gonna talk about some Photoshop wizardry to give your photos a somewhat airbrushed 80s movie poster look, like some of these classics. And if you're too young for those movies, uh, Stranger Things did it too. And here are a few edits that I made. Here's an important disclaimer. The original posters were hand-drawn. We're gonna be using photos here, so it's not gonna be exact, but it'll be pretty cool. So to start off, you want a high contrast, sharp photo. Let's just grab one. We'll just go on Google and type in Owen Wilson. Yeah, see that one's not good enough. We need more, more detail, a little bit more shadow, a little bit more con- There it is. Wow. That's the one. Awesome. High contrast with a ton of shadows is what you need. So if you're shooting this photo yourself, try to go for like a Rembrandt lighting or something like that. Not to uh, go down a rabbit hole here, but Rembrandt lighting is basically done with the whole single light to the side, so you get a ton of shadows and that little nose triangle happening like this one. Once you're set with your photo, let's hop into Photoshop. I know it's a little scary territory because we're always in Lightroom on this channel, but Photoshop's our friend too. Let's drop in our photo and duplicate the layer so that our edits aren't destructive. Or if you want to live on the edge, I mean, don't. Wow. We're going to be doing three main things here, keeping it simple. We're going to sharpen the photo, we're going to oil paint it, and then we're going to posterize it. Then we'll add a little bit of green. So I guess four main things. We're gonna start with an unsharp mask. The goal here is to sharpen the image up. You can be a little aggressive here. The more detail, the better. And once all the filters are on, you're not gonna be able to tell how aggressive you were with this filter anyway. Now is also a good time to jump in and make any brightness or contrast changes you might need. A little bit more contrast will help this effect work better. Jump into filters, stylize, oil paint. Now oil paint is kind of a weird one. If it's grayed out for you, you gotta go into your preferences and make sure that open CL is checked off. Otherwise, oil paint won't work. Also, you need the 64-bit version of Photoshop and a graphics card that'll support it. Pretty picky. Anyway, once you're good with that, we're gonna modify some of the settings here. I encourage you to feel this part out. Every photo is gonna be a little different. We want the photo to have the effect, but not distorted to the point where we lose context of the photo, you know what I mean? You can't have Owen Wilson looking like, like Flubber. Oh wait, Halloween, right? You can't have Owen Wilson looking like Michael Myers with a Gaussian flutter. <laughs> I find that this top slider here is the most important one to yeet around back and forth. Find your happy place and move on. Just keep in mind that you're controlling this effect via the number of pixels it's modifying, so the size of your source photo actually does matter. A big brush on a small image is going to have a much more dramatic effect than the same size brush on a larger image. That's relativity, folks. Wow. Here's an important note too, this knob down here controls the angle of the light, so you want to rotate it to try and match the angle of the light in the original photo. Next up we're going to duplicate this shit, you can drag it down here or hit command or control J. Wow. I know Owen, shortcuts are cool. Go into your channels and control or command click the RGB channel. Now you'll see a selection on your image, jump back into layers and put a mask on that selection. Now set the blending mode to vivid light. This is just going to deepen the contrast and make some of those highlights pop. No, no wow there? All right, moving on. We'll just lower the opacity a little bit so that it's not too abrasive. Awesome. Now we're gonna make this a smart object by right-clicking and uh, doing the thing here. Perfect. Next thing we're gonna do is posterize it. So go to Filter, then Filter Gallery. Under Artistic, you'll see Poster Edges. Now in here, we're gonna play with these sliders a little bit. Under Edge Thickness, I'll keep the number kinda low, between two and three. Edge Intensity, I'm gonna keep that at zero because it just, ooh, it just looks terrible. And under Posterization, we're gonna keep that all the way at maximum, which is six, if you bring it down lower. For some strange reason, he kinda starts to look like Matthew McConaughey, so we, we don't really want that. Once you're good, click OK. 
And the last thing we're gonna do is create a new layer, fill it with some kind of gray color. We're gonna set the opacity down low, like 30, 40%. Then we're gonna go to filter, noise, and add noise. And then we'll just kind of move that slider around until we're happy. I kept it relatively low. It's up to your taste though. Once we're good here, we'll just set this to overlay. And there we go, it's beautiful. This technique can really give you a unique look to your high contrast photos. They're great thumbnails too. Anyway guys, happy editing. Thanks for stopping by guys. Be sure to subscribe and do something to that bell. As always, I'll see you next week. All right, bye. Oh my god, dude, Clint Eastwood looks so fucking old. It's so sad. Oh my god.